The Gold Nuggets won their fourth consecutive GCAC tournament title on Saturday, and one of the reasons for their success is that players like tournament MVP Kimberly Simpkins are unselfish. Regardless if I'm not scoring, I want to play defense and work hard and go all out because, you know, every, any, everything helps. Everything helps. And Xavier's opponent and destination for their first round game will be decided tomorrow, and we'll let you know then. All right, NFL owners have hit the eject button on instant replay for the upcoming season. Baseball, UNO trailing the Salukis, one zip in the second, but then Jimmy Cueto with the base hit to center. Cabacera scores, Carson scores, UNO leading 2-1, to one. UNO winning. Final score was 13-7, Lloyd Heckard had five RBI. Tulane by 10, LSU pounded out four homers tonight. They are now 18-0. Kerry Kittles putting on a show. End of the first quarter, driving, and it will drop. And then it's Kerry from the outside with the three-pointer. Watch him run inside. He'll get the alley-oop, and it's jam time. Kittles has 23, but it's not enough. New Jersey falls to Utah. Doubles trailed by 14, but came back to win 108-104. Washington's Chris Weber had 32. Indiana wins. So do the Orlando Magic. All right, the big dance, the NCAA tournament, begins tomorrow. Tonight we close with some advice for the college coaches everywhere. It comes from the late Jim Valvano, who coached NC State to the NCAA championship in 83, and he begins by telling you how to win that opening round game. Hopefully you can get about 30 tapes up, right? And then you realize when you have all those tapes that you don't have enough time to watch all those tapes. <laughs> As you get closer and closer to the game, you realize that team you're playing, oh, that's a bad team for, we don't match up well. I think they're great. Holy, got to have a good year. Most important thing is to make sure you have your lucky clothes ready. Which tie did I win the most games? Forward architecture to make it bigger inside than Accord, Ultima, or Grand Am. We gave Stratus a smaller price than Forward Closed captioning of Channel 6 News is sponsored in part by Circuit City. Let's get right to sports with Bob Alvarez. Bob. Two words for Tulane. It's over. Tulane uh, could not win its opening round game in the NIT. They trailed by 13 at the half, wound up losing by 7. 79-72, your final. Honeycutt with 17 in his last game for the Wave. They closed the season at 20-11. and 11. At the high school state tournament, the Shaw Eagles will play for the 5A state championship following tonight's 54-52 victory over Airline. Pick it up for you late in the game. That's Airline's Adrian Johnson with the block. That's going to start the break. Brandon Isaac makes it 48-47 Airline. Shaw's Ryan Clark with the drive. This time, Johnson a little too eager. Eagles have the lead. Tory Walker scores 19, gets a nice pass. 51-48 Shaw. Walker at the line. He could give the Eagles a three-point lead, but he misses. So if Airline hits, they're going to win. They get one shot. They get another shot. But Shaw comes down with the rebound, and Shaw wins it 54-52. So I thought we were letting it slip away to the very end. But when they came down and hit the last, missed the last shot, we were just letting it slip. We had leads, but they just kept coming back, kept fighting. We want to be in a position to where if we get one stop to win the game, we win. And, uh, you know, you, you got to want that. It's about an attitude. And I think my guys get ex almost excited when they're in that situation to have to get a stop to win, and we were able to do that. All right, in Saturday's uh, championship, Shaw will play the winner of the South Lafouche Bird game, and Bird is leading with 45 seconds. They have a one-point lead. All right, two other New Orleans teams that will be playing for a championship on Saturday include the Carr Cougars, who will be on the Cajun Dome floor at 530 when they meet Parkview Baptist. Cohen will look for its second consecutive 4A championship. Uh, they'll play Ellender, who tonight beat Wassman 58-56. In the NCAA tournament, North Carolina is alive, but it wasn't easy. Dean Smith tying Adolph Ruff with 876 career victories. This one not decided until the end. Fairfield's Francis with the three. North Carolina up by just two, but Serge Zwicker is on the offensive boards. Then it's Shamond Williams with a nice clutch, and the Tar Heels win this one 82-74. 
Now, the College of Charleston beat Maryland, so uh, they also advance. Kentucky does, and uh, Kansas also. From Conference USA, Cincinnati beat Butler, and in the Midwest Regional, Iowa State took care of Illinois State. And that's one of the reasons the Cyclones are celebrating. The other, the play of Kelvin Cato. Watch this monster putback. Then he gets the position inside. It's jam time. He has a career-high 29, and his coach thinks he knows why. Maybe he's smelling the NBA, whatever it is, but he, he really worked hard. He's been coming early and staying late in practice. And uh, Bird won, so they will face Shaw Saturday. Okay. All right. Still to come, have you got your green ready? And up next, we'll let you know about all the St. Patrick's Day parades, plus more song from the Wesleyan Spirits. Competition for electricity is by your local Chrysler and Plymouth dealer. The women's two lanes basketball team has just played so well all year, but not so well tonight. Yeah, they could have used playing this game at home, mm -hmm. but the gym's too small, and that's an old story. But uh, strength inside by George Washington tonight was the difference. Two lanes, uh, fantastic season ending tonight. They finished the year with a 27 and 5 record and fall just one game short of being included in the tournament's Sweet 16. Pick it up for you, Mary Lowry is going to uh, come up with a bucket here on the end. Tulane cuts it down to 61 to 52. They're in a nice run right here. And then you're going to see the freshman, Grace Daly, going to come up with a steal. Tulane battling back in this game. But again, George Washington, too much strength on the inside. Let's go to the scoreboard. The final score was 81 to 67. Marion Williams led the wave with 13 points. Well, tonight in Baton Rouge, the Lady Tigers put together a run in the second half, and that's how they beat Marquette 71 to 58. Natasha Dorsey says, don't cover me, and it's going up. This is a three, and it is Tigers by eight at the half. Elaine Powell then hits the jumper. Sue Gunner's team gets the break going. Pietra Gay to Tony Gross. Tigers up by 10. This time, Gay gets, gets her hands on the loose ball. Seven to two run. Tigers are in the Sweet 16. There's your final. They will face Old Dominion in West Lafayette on Saturday. Well, anyone who's ever been called back for a second interview can guess what may happen at LSU. Ole Miss basketball coach Rob Evans will have his second interview with Joe Dean tomorrow. Uh, baseball America says the LSU Tiger baseball team is still Number one in the country. I also got to let you know the uh, reserve seats for the Tigers weekend series with Florida are sold out. But you can catch LSU in town tomorrow night because they will be at Privateer Park. Uh, game starts at 7. We'll have those highlights for you here tomorrow night at 10. Well, the next time Jim Mora wears a headset, he won't be speaking with a coach. Mora will be in the broadcast booth analyzing games for NBC. Mora and the network are close to completing a deal that would put Jim Mora right here on Channel 6. Elvis Gerbach has a new life in Kansas City. He signed a five-year contract after four years in San Francisco. Trainer Wayne Catalano just loves this horse, Crypto Star, who came from 14 lengths behind to win yesterday's Louisiana Derby. Their next race will be the Bluegrass Stakes or the Arkansas Derby, and that may lead to a run in the Kentucky Derby. We want in every step that he makes, make a forward step and uh, take us to the roses, but uh, if he runs real good, we're gonna take him there. He's got the style, he's got the pedigree, he's got what it takes to get us there. So he could be the Derby horse for me. All right, your NBA stuff goes like this tonight. Carl Malone scores 37 points and Utah wins. Atlanta needs OT to beat the Magic. Cleveland takes care of Detroit. Uh, Boston stopped an eight-game skid. Washington took care of the Spurs, and Denver is trailing the Lakers in the fourth quarter. You know, we've talked a lot this season about the ladies at Tulane. Mm -hmm. You think about it, 27 and 5, there are a lot of basketball programs that would take that record. A lot of men's yeah. teams that would yeah. take exactly. that record. Exactly. And they have some real good players coming in there next year. Oh, and Barbara cool. Ferris, their center, will return. So they will reload All next right. year, and they'll make probably a better run than they did this year. Well, okay. kudos for them. And, of course, LSU is still alive. Yeah. yeah. They play next Saturday. Okay. Well, stay right there. We'll be right back. So call your cable operator and say, I want to...
Bob Alvarez is on the sports side of the anchor desk. Must have been a big game at uh, Private Deer Park tonight. <laughs> yeah, Traffic was backed up for miles. <laughs> Over 5,000 people there. Their biggest crowd in 18 years. And they saw a lot of balls leaving the park. Uh, wind was blowing out tonight at Privateer Park, and that means we have highlights that will stretch the vocal cords. Pick it up for you in the third inning. UNO's Miguel Rivera at the plate. This one's high, this one's deep. <laughs> it's gone. Privateers jump out to a 5-1 to one lead in the fourth. Brother Martin's Blair Barbier with the shot. This one, hoo hoo. A three-run homer. It cut UNO's lead down to 5-4. Fifth inning. Privateer center fielder Jim Cueto coming in, coming in. Nice grab. Then in the bottom of the fifth, UNO's Lloyd Heckard. This one wastes no time. <laughs> Leaving the yard. That means the Privateers lead 6-4 to four in the eighth inning. Head coach Tom Schwanner didn't like something going on. He's arguing Tommy's going to get tossed. And uh, was it some bad language? Well, he said I did, but uh, who knows? You know, I didn't say anything directed at him personally, so I was kind of surprised, but that's, that's part of it. The excitement level that we bring to the ballpark, uh, wherever we go, we set records, and, and we have to play at a very high level because, uh, you know, this makes their season. <laughs> Jason Faust now 5-0. and He gets the win in relief. Uh, there's your final score. Well, uh, sources tell us that Memphis is interested in Rob Evans, and so is Ohio State, but LSU has an offer on the table. After meeting with athletic director Joe Dean, touring the facilities and speaking with some former players, the well, Ole Miss coach aborted a plane, and now he'll decide whether or not he wants the job. Well, we'll go back home. Uh, my wife and I will go back home and uh, try to uh, uh, do some soul searching and then try to come up with a decision pretty quick. Uh, it's very difficult uh, to make decisions when, you, when you know, you're not as totally focused as you'd like to be. Talk about a tough guy. Listen to this. Indiana University coach Bob Knight has told four juniors he doesn't want him back on the team next year. East Jeff grad Neil Reed is among those who found out it's no way but Knight's way. I think he needs to find a coach that's going to let him play as he wants to play, that's going to uh, let him be able to play that he thinks he's most effective. I mean, this is his last year. Uh, it's Patterson's last year. I don't really think it's fair for them to come back here with me feeling that they're not going to get to play as much. Wow. All right, Dillard's first ever NAIA tournament victory was at the expense of the fourth seeded Benedict team, who is now out of it. Blue Devils play again on Thursday. Seattle coach George Carl turns his back. He won't see Michael Jordan go jam time. Seattle forces overtime. Sean Kemp inside, but Jordan wins it with free throws. Bulls 89-87. Marcus Camby has 36 for Toronto. The Knicks win. The Pacers get 27 from Reggie Miller. Washington beats Dallas. The Clippers have a lead, and Houston took care of New Jersey. On October 31st, Ricky Jackson and Stan Brock will be inducted into the Saints Hall of Fame. And today I asked the former lineman for his take on Ditka. Uh, I've never seen a coach walk out on the field and block anybody or catch a ball or throw it. Uh, his attitude is what's going to try and carry over to the players. And as long as it's a good positive attitude and, and guys are willing to work for him and do it his way, and, uh, then I think everything will be fine. And the first mini camp is in a couple of weeks. Okay, we're ready. And still ahead tonight, art in the Arctic. Find out how they express themselves when it's 40 below. Bob Alvarez joins us on the sports side of the anchor desk, and LSU finally got their man, huh, Bob? Yeah, it's, you know, introducing new basketball coaches is not something they've had to do often, yeah. but I hope this guy gets at least five or six-year contract because it's going to take a while to a real get challenge. Yeah, LSU basketball back to where it's been. Uh, tomorrow at 3 p.m., John Brady will become just the third man in the past 31 years to be introduced as the LSU Head basketball coach Brady is leaving Samford after six seasons and an 89-77 and 77 record. His rebuilding of that program a major reason for his hiring because he faces another rebuilding job at LSU. You'll hear from the new coach right here tomorrow at 5.
Well, during the Sun Belt Tournament, you heard Tick Price tell Six Sports he would listen when his season was over. Well, Memphis is ready to do some talking. Tick Price is expected to interview for that job soon. The Saints are using the word ongoing. Reports would lead you to believe gathering momentum as a better way to describe contract negotiations between Heath Schuler and the Saints. One report saying the Saints have a four-year offer on the table with the Redskins asking for a second-round draft pick. That's a good deal. Nine seasons, six Pro Bowls, and one Super Bowl ring add up to retirement for Keith Jackson. Well, Connecticut unbeaten. And last year, Tennessee knocked them out of the tournament. No problem for the Huskies getting up for tonight's rematch. Their problem was defense. For Tennessee, Green with the three. Vols enjoying a 13-point lead. Nice pass right here. Jolly to Shamika Holdsclaw. And Tennessee knocks Connecticut out of this tournament again. 91-81 the final. ODU beats Florida. They're going to the final four. So is Notre Dame. The Stanford-Georgia game is going to start in about five minutes. Well, the weekend sweep of the Gators has reaffirmed Baseball America magazine that the LSU Tigers are the number one team in the country. They are at Louisiana Tech tomorrow. Well, remember when you got your driver's license, what was the first thing you wanted to do? Go fast. Well, this young guy is no exception, except his dad says, go ahead. And Rich Lenz tells us why. Inside this car is the youngest and best pro stock drag racer. Now it's Third Door Sonoma by GMC. Our latest innovation, the first and only vehicle. local Chrysler and Plymouth dealer. Let's get right to sports with Bob Alvarez. Tick Price in the news. Tick has met with officials at Memphis, and he is a candidate to replace Larry Finch. Price has four years remaining on his pressing contract, but he can leave if a potential employer is willing to buy out the remaining years. Athletic Director Ron Maestri told me that as of this morning, Memphis had not offered a contract to Tick Price. Well, John Brady received a very attractive contract from LSU. Now he has to figure out how to win, win some games. Now, how is he going to do that? Well, here's Rich Lenz from Baton Rouge. Coach John Brady. John. John Brady will be paid $350,000 a year for five years to do at LSU what he did at Sam. What a cruel, unusual thing to do <laughs> to a bull. Now, it's ugly, Saints, too. Yeah, are the Saints going to be cruel to us this year? Or are the Or are they going to um, I see victories. be better for uh, You see victories. We have the schedule right here. We're going to uh -huh. show it to everyone. And uh, as you look at this regular season schedule, I want you to also count the wins. How many do you see? And I'll give you my total after we take a look. Now, I say the Saints are on the old Ditka high and win their first two. They lose at San Francisco, beat the Lions, and fall against the Giants. Saints will not win in Chicago, but will rebound against the Falcons. Saints are four and five as they head into their open week. Now the one victory in November will be the home game against the Seahawks. Saints head into December at five and eight. Saints cannot beat the Rams. They take care of the Cardinals and they don't upset the Chiefs playoff hopes. How many did you see? I say six and 10 in 97. All right, if Tick Price negotiates a contract with Memphis, it will happen in Indianapolis because that's where he'll be tomorrow. Now, sources telling Channel 6 Sports tonight that UNO Chancellor Gregory O'Brien told the Memphis president the buyout clause in Tick's contract is not negotiable, and the price now is $384,000. It's kind of delicate, and uh, it's, it's uh, something that we're wrestling with, and I think it's probably best kept private at this point. Uh, maybe down the road we can get into it, and hopefully it'll be resolved and go away. Uh, I did not want to go to Indianapolis looking for a coach, uh, and hopefully that can happen. I don't know if it's realistic. Okay, high school baseball tonight. It's the storied rivalry between Rummel and Jesuit. Third inning, two men on. Jesuit's Patrick Boyle with the shot in the center. Run scores. Jesuit leads 3-2. But in the sixth, Rummel's Stephen Antoine hit a grand slam. That's the difference. Rummel winning this 10-5A opener, 7-5. College baseball tonight. UNO beats Jackson State 6-2. 
Tulane goes to 18 and 9, and yes, LSU did lose tonight at Northeast. 6-2. The Delgado Dolphins are 18 and 7 this season. They are preparing for a two-game set against Meridian, the top-ranked junior college team in the country. I feel there's not really much difference uh, between the two teams. I haven't seen them this year, but last year, I mean, they, they got all the hype, and, and, you know, we just went in there, and we went in there trying to win, and that's what we did. Uh, this year, we're going to do the same thing. All right, the uh, real Dennis Rodman will sit for the remainder of the season, and a fine isn't involved. This time, uh, his absence is due to an injury. Watch uh, Rodman's knee hit the backside of this player. It buckles. And Rodman has a sprained knee ligament. And right now, the Bulls are hoping that Rodman will be back in the lineup for the playoffs. Now, in New Jersey, some would consider this a rare, but also a nice pass from Jimmy Jackson to Kendall Gill. Kerry Kittles lights it up from three-point land. And Jersey beats the 76ers, 123-105. Quickly, Washington wins. Miami's won seven in a row. Portland by one. Indiana beats Dallas. New York beats Detroit and Denver is losing. See you tomorrow. All right. Take care. Still ahead tonight, she's only three years old, and some are calling her a future Olympic. Still ahead. I think, I think our record and what we've accomplished here says we can do the job. It's just a matter of getting an opportunity to do it. Mm. We'll see. Uh, Tick Price has a five year contract at Memphis with a base salary of 130 grand. Now, think about next season when Memphis plays at Tulane. Wouldn't mind seeing that one. Uh, for Tick, the priority right now is finding some talent for his team because they don't have much. Well, I certainly knew that we need uh, players at every position right now. Uh, we cannot sit back and complain what we don't have. We got to make sure we have kids to come in here and let's get this thing done. And one of Tick's former players, Kawan Johnson, in the slam dunk contest tonight. Jam time all over the place. Tulane's Chris Cameron, also in Indianapolis, shirtless. He misses, but he comes back for the jam. Kawan led uh, this competition after two rounds. It's uh, still going on right now. We've got to say congratulations to the Raceland 11- and 12-year-old Biddy basketball team. They won the national championship in Wichita, Kansas, with a 51-48 victory over Mandeville. And for the 13th year, the country's best volleyball teams are in New Orleans. For the Cajun Land Classic, seven age groups will compete at Newman and Loyola. The finals are Sunday at the convention center. Now tomorrow, Olympian Karen Kemner will play an exhibition match in the convention center at 2. The NBA scores tonight. Michael Jordan scoring 12. And, and the Bulls win. Atlanta gets their sixth in a row. Houston, 107-89. San Antonio is a winner. And tonight, the lights at Tad Gormley shining, perhaps on a football career for 35 hopefuls. The New Orleans Hustlers holding a tryout. And Rich Lenz is going to tell you about their dream uh, tomorrow night at 6. So all sizes, all shapes, hoping to uh, catch on. You know, you kind of want to pull for the St. Ong coach. Yeah, he's, he's a nice guy, proven to be and a successful coach. Yeah, very competent guy. But he needs someone to give him that chance, just like we all do, I guess. And he's right. You know, those other guys like John Thompson and Digger Phelps were high school back basketball And, I, and I'll coaches. tell you what, if he could get a couple of those St. Aug kids to stick around instead of going to Arizona or Villanova, That's good wouldn't too. be bad for UNO. Oh, before I forget, Michigan won the NIT championship game tonight, 82-73. to 73, Who so. they beat? FSU. Oh, okay. So they're champs. Okay. Right. We'll have better luck for New Orleans teams next year. Still ahead tonight, if you thought Foghorn Leghorn was crazy. Well, the same two teams met tonight with the winner advancing to the NCAA championship game. And in the second half, Kristen Folk of Stanford is going to give the Cardinal a four point lead. But Old Dominion comes back off the steal. That's Natalie Diaz. This game goes to overtime. Stanford has three shots to win it. Here is the final try. This one won't drop. And Old Dominion hands Stanford its second loss of the season. So that means ODU will now face the winner of the Tennessee Notre Dame game in Saturday's NCAA championship. And the Vols have a five point lead. Well, Lute Olson and his Wildcats are one of the four men's teams that will play tomorrow in the semis. And you'd think after making it this far, a coach wouldn't have to defend his team's talent. But Olson knows the doubters remain. Uh, I know a lot of 
People have sort of felt like we don't belong here, but I think our guys do uh, belong here. If we get the opportunity to run, then we're going to do that. If we had the opportunity to play half court, then we're going to play that. We feel confident with the style that we've played. This is a team, when I watch them on film, I come away with trying to find a weakness. I can't find it. Normally, we watch so much film, we could find weaknesses. I think tomorrow night we'll do the same thing.